All right, let's get right into our third story and just stay in the region. So Sam, tell us a little bit about the latest between Iran, the U.S. and the nuclear deal. Yeah, uh, last few weeks have been interesting few weeks with Biden coming to power. Now everybody's expecting some development on the issue. And the la- latest development was the fact that the French foreign minister went on a radio show and clearly said that Iran is seeking to build nuclear weapons. Um, this was uh, obviously denied by the Iranian foreign minister, Javad Zarif, who did you know, um, answer him on Twitter as well as other places saying that this is bullshit, this is lies, blah, 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 that type of thing. But um, what seems quite interesting is that the European part, European uh, signatories to the deal all are hardening their stance somewhat. At least the Euro- uh, French and the German ones. Uh, the German foreign minister, Heiko Maas, if I'm not mistaken, he was very, uh, you know, he was talking about the deal that includes things more than the original deal. He talked about the fact that Iranian ambitions should be, you know, put in check or something like that. While, interestingly, Britain, who is usually considered the closer ally and of uh, Israel and U.S., they are they urged U.S. to act as quickly as possible before the upcoming Iranian elections. But uh, in my view, thankfully, this is something I agree with, but Iran does not seem to be softening its stance. And at, I think yesterday Zarif went to Russia and in, or maybe it was today, they signed a, some a, a security information sharing deal of some kind. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. The situation is changing. It seems that the Europeans are taking a tougher stance than maybe, maybe U- UK and US. Although uh, there are things that come out of US are also contradictory. Some people are like, you know, no, we're going to quickly return to the deal. But the officials that are put in positions, they are, um, you know, uh, some of them are saying that Iran should first come back to the deal. Some of them say that Iran should first comply. So, you know, it's an ongoing situation, but it was interesting that the Europeans are now taking the hardest stance. So anything else on the Iran nuclear deal to add? Nothing really, no, nothing uh, right now, to be honest. It was just... Uh, and, you know, the recent <laughs> tweets and talks. Yeah, and last week we did we did a show where we covered, so the Iranian elections are coming up, so you covered two of the candidates who are in the in, in the running, and we talked a little bit more about the Iran two, nuclear... Uh, yeah, two of the are can- basically two, two people yeah. have officially announced that they're running. Yeah. And, uh, you know, who knows? And you gave your early assessments... Uh, which is that most likely the conservatives will will win this time because reformists were in power and and all of that the usual stuff. Okay. Although to be fair, I mean yeah. that's why uh, I guess predictions are crazy uh, to do because dollar uh, has the value of dollar has been going down quite a, quite a lot in the last week or so. So if actually they pull off uh, reformist uh, Rouhani pulls off a miracle, the whole thing will change. But as of right now, yeah, I think conservatives will win. Okay, so you just mentioned the price of the dollar. Just explain a little bit, just for like anybody who's not from Iran, just about like the correlation of the price of the Iranian currency, which is the real and dollar. And just in one minute, talk about the last, let's say, 10, 20 years, whatever you want. Sure. Well, last three decades in one minute. Okay, but no, no, I I know what you're referring to because yeah, I mean if you're in Europe and America especially, but I think if you are in other countries, you do understand this quite clearly. Uh, countries that are basically dependent on, for majority of their consumer goods, for majority of the uh, goods used in industries, they are dependent on import. They need to. Um, Basically, uh, so they are dependent on that. So they are on the forefront of uh, basically when the, the the value of dollar changes in Iran, value of everything changes. Uh, gold, car, petrol, all of pe- well, petrol is government controlled, so no. But value of everything changes, and pushes up cost for normal people as well as for government industries and all that. And uh, during the last 40 years, basically, following the revolution, the value of dollar has been 
steadily declining with big jumps in the middle of it. But during the last two, three years, the uh, with the maximum pressure campaign from Trump and companies pulling out of Iran and all that, the, the thing went crazy. The value of dollar tripled even, I think, maybe four times what it was maybe five years ago. So as a result of that, everything else also goes up in price. And uh, yeah, basically, everybody becomes extremely unhappy. But if it does go down, that would mean, you know, uh, a lot of people would do would become happy. Although I would say the price of the cost of products, the price of products does not necessarily usually comes down as much as dollar does, for example. Usually they go up and they stay up because, mm -hmm. you know, life. So um, what we'll see, but except things like, let's say, computers or, you know, things that are literally being uh, traded in dollar, but things that are, let's say, food stuff, their price goes up, they don't come down, usually, usually. And it's interesting that you mentioned food and electronics. So because electronics, let's say all of these, of course, are imported, but Iran has a lot of the, has a lot of agriculture as a big agriculture sector, I believe. But, so but, does the uh, does the food of locally produced does the price of locally produced food also go up significantly when the dollar yeah, it goes does. up? Yeah, uh, it does significantly because the producers also buy electronics or other mm -hmm. things that have gone up so that's one <laughs> issue. they have to live the more yeah, yeah basically <laughs> the more important issue is the fact that the um for example for industrial agriculture much of the much of the pesticides they come from abroad much of the Very soil true. sometimes they buy soil to do this you know so it's not that if you're in agriculture you're this definitely or fully in you know independent or you know you don't need depending on what you produce depending on um your uh, location all of that could you know so that industry is also very much dependent on international trade no you're you're very and, right and and iran is a big consumer like people consume a lot of food mm -hmm. and stuff so you know it's a big consumer society so no, definitely, definitely. Comment came out a bit ignorant. <laughs> no, I think, but I mean, of course, everything's related. So just because you grow the apples in Iran, it doesn't mean it's not connected to the rest of no, the, no, but the I, no, economy. No, I, I mean, I think it was a great. No, yeah, no, no I know. I was myself also, you know, simplified it in my head. But OK, so um, we've talked about nuclear in Iran. We talked about this little dollar to real thing that that came up oh another fun fact about the iranian cu currency is that there are two names for it kind of so the official one is real oh, that's and great. then uh, you you really uh, you remove a zero <laughs> and it becomes toman so just for an example how no, much I, is one dollar in a real right now just and then we move on i from think this. today is 23 Oh, real? I don't know. I think it's 23. I don't know, real. I never okay, really it's in Toman. Real. You just have to add a zero 20... for it. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I can't. I'm not going to say anything because this is math. And no, of course. Of okay. Right, I'm right. Of... Anyway, 23,500 uh, Toman, something like that, right it's now. It's $1. And about two years. And when Trump, before Trump's maximum pressure campaign started, it was around 8,000. Mm -hmm. And a year yeah. before that, it was like four thousand. So you know. Wow! So triple then, even then like went yeah, crazy. increased by six. It, it, oh. it reached it reached thirty thousand at some wow. point for a day or two, but it was it was stable at twenty seven, twenty eight for a few months. Okay, and um, this kind of reminds me of one last thing, which is maybe another day we can talk about, which is fascinating in Iran. So you're thinking that if the price of things, you know, the inflation can be so crazy because of these increases. But at the same time, putting your money in banks, they have quite a high interest rate, which might be interesting for like an audience in, in Western countries, right? It's, it's interesting in that way. Yeah. Oh, to be honest with you, you should do a completely separate video yeah. about that. But yeah, you get a um, majority of people put their because interest because inflation is very high so yeah. interest rates are very high and you know it's usually good in before dollar used to jump like this crazy it used to give even more profit i think to mm -hmm. you than 
do- if you traded in if you just bought dollars and kept them yeah so yeah iranian economic system is very yeah. it needs complete reform you know it's a crazy system that you know anyways uh, yeah we yeah. can get into yeah. that. We're, we're, well we're less than two months away from the iranian new year so we're going to put out a lot of videos about iran so we'll, we'll add this to the mix but okay you teased out a uh, little fun story involving an iranian police officer what is that all about yeah actually that was a funny that was an interesting story because i usually follow international news but i saw this one in iran and you know usually all the stories about iran is about the corruption and how the iranian police is bad and blah 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 but this was a great story i thought both about the police and the people of uh, iran's capital tehran um, which was it was about a story that a um, member of the parliament uh, with his in his personal car tried to use this special lane for the buses you know tried to go there and then block the way and and he, he blocked the way and stuff and then uh, off not a police officer but a, i think a soldier maybe not an officer but a lower rank i don't really know he went and uh, told them that you know you shouldn't do that come out and you know you should use the normal lanes and um, stuff and the MP got out of his car and apparently slapped the soldier. there is a video of it which I haven't to be honest seen yet but there is a video of it that uh, hopefully you can put on <laughs> این ماشین اومده رانندش پیاده شده بدون مجوز تردد خط ویژه به من گفته لاشی من جوابشو دادم بهش گفتم بچه خوشگل راند خود نماینده مجلس پیاده شده یه شک زدی زیر گوش من که این هم شاهد داریم هم شاهد داریم هم اون قسمت دعوای دولت و قبل پلاوی دوربین هستش ایشون نماینده مجلس شهر رو به هم ریختن کل شهر کل همه جا رو بسته که میگه من نماینده مجلس هم میگه من نماینده مجلس آقا ایشون چک زد من شاهدم چک زد چک زد ایشون من مردم رو گرفته دیگه نماینده مجلس هم هزار نفر رو گرفته نماینده مجلس هم Get <laughs> this video or something but uh, yeah he slapped the police officer and the people went crazy the people started attacking the MP's car saying that you shouldn't sorry let me stop, stop you so right here one quick question is this MP like f- famous in the way that people on the street would recognize his face no 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 he's okay. from a He's from a, he's from, from uh, original Persia part of Iran. Actually, uh, he represent that uh, a city in Kohiliya Boy Rahmat, if I'm not mistaken. He was a, he's a, basically somebody who rose to during the Ahmadinejad years because he was a good bo- good little boy that listened to everything everyone okay. said. So, he, but and his uh, car and himself, it, it wouldn't show in any way that he's a member of parliament. Mm, I don't know. I doubt it. I doubt it. They, there are there are cars with diplomatic whatever, yeah. and they are for embassies and stuff. So yeah. I don't I don't know. But yeah. Anyway, people went crazy, attacked the car, <laughs> which was that that part I saw of it. That was funny. They were you know kicking the car and all that. And on Twitter and everything, people have gone crazy after him. He has said that. This is a lie. I only pushed the person, and he called me a. This is a root war. This is a, something Iranians use donkey. That sort of means uh, you are you don't have any value. Uh, he called me a donkey or something, and I pushed him. I didn't slap him, but I think there are videos and uh, witnesses, many witnesses, that he that he slapped him, and apparently he didn't. Uh, he wasn't rude or anything. The police. Well, I loved how. Yeah, like um, you know, usually you you know, and I was glad that you know this happened. I'm uh, that the people are at least supportive of the police officer. That's a very good thing, 
And, you know, I like that police officer felt confident enough that he lives in a country that can talk to the MP and tell him that, what the fuck, I don't care who you are, just go to the other way. No, definitely. And earlier on, I cut you off when you were giving a little background on the member of parliament. Was there anything else that you were oh, saying? Uh, you mentioned how he came a, up during the Ahmadinejad time. I think he was a governor of Khorasan for a while. Then he became a government of the place. Where, where is that? Where is Khorasan geographically? Uh, north, northeast of Iran. Okay. The, Khorasan is now three estates. When I was a kid, it was one estate. Um, and it's three estates now. Northern Khorasan. Southern Khorasan and Khorasan Razavi, which is the center, Mashhad, and all that. It's, uh, you know, it's probably all together. It was the yeah. largest. So it has big cities in it, then. Oh yeah, it's uh, yeah. Mashhad. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, Mashhad is there. I mean, to be honest, I know there is. I don't think there are any other big, big cities, but Mashhad is mm-hmm. big you, city. Ma- Mashhad ha- t- has more tourists than Tehran does. You know. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, um, and it's definitely more l- luxurious right now. If you go to Mashhad, you see buildings, l- crazy buildings. But, yeah, he, yeah he he's from there. there. And then uh, I think Fars, which is Persian word for Persia, the, the area, original area. Uh, and, uh, yeah, um, so, but, again, it was very interesting story. And he's, I hope it's continue. like, I hope he doesn't get away with it. And because police said they will uh, try to. Uh, you know prosecute him and all that so i hope he doesn't get away with it that's that would be fantastic